Hmm, what's this? Hello, welcome to The Freak Show. Bumpy McSquiggums here. I want to thank you all for joining me as I start up my first look mini-series on The Storm God. Darkness is coming. Yeah, sounds pretty epic, right? Yep, and it should. Why? Because the game itself is pretty epic. And therefore, it deserved an epic introduction. That being said, the game did release into Steam Early Access on January 28th, 2016. So January of this year. And I didn't actually hear about it for, well, pretty much the entire time until about a week, week and a half ago. And then it just popped up into my, like, Steam feed and I'm like, What is this? I must touch it with my face. I never did that. But I did reach out to the developer, got my hands on the game, and here it is. And I'm going to showcase it for all of you. So, why a first look miniseries as opposed to a full LP? Uh, it's an early access. I'd like to see it when it's completely done be played through from beginning to end. But right now, I want to get you guys excited about it because the game's fantastic. There's a few things that I could see being improved upon or worked on, but I mean, overall, like right now, the game is super fun. I've already played it for several hours, and I'm going to continue playing it for a long, long time. That being said, I'm going to let the opening cinematic play, and then we're going to come back and we're going to start. More than a thousand years ago, a storm came up in the realm of men. It brought darkness to our lands that lasted a generation. In that darkness, the ancient dragon came for the first time. It ravaged the countryside and burned land and buildings. With the dragon came other foul creatures from the farthest north killing and pillaging on their way south. It was during these times of despair that Lord Ironheart became the first Lord Commander of the Storm Guard. He rallied men and elves in Stormhome Keep, a fortified outpost far in the north. The Storm Guard drove back the foul creatures to the farthest north. Eventually, they lured the dragon into a trap and were able to kill it. The darkness vanished, and peace was restored. As the years came and went, we took these memories as stories told to frighten children. Stormhome Keep was abandoned. Today, the Storm Guard is a shadow of what it once was. But then, Lord Commander, we made a terrible discovery. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Again, the game is The Storm Guard. Darkness is coming. It's by Bitman Studios, which is pretty much a one-man deal. And, yeah, let's begin, shall we? New game. All right, pick a name for your outpost, Lord Commander. I like the way you speak. It should sound something like Storm Home Keep. Nah, we can't go with that. We're going to call it um, Bump Storm Keep. Bump Storm Keep. Eh. Sure, there we go. Bam! What? Alright, let's see. We got easy and normal. We're going to go with normal. Explain game mechanics. We could do that, and I think I'm going to let it play. We're going to let it go. Alright, well, we're going to hop in here in just a second and see oh, what's up. Let the game begin. So it's going to ease us into all the different buildings and all the different things in our outpost that we can actually use. Welcome, Lord Commander. For a thousand years, there has been no sign of the dragon. But while mere mortals with hasty bodies live and die, dragons spend centuries coiled in their underground lairs, sheltered from wind and weather, ignoring all the activities on the bright green surface. Only rarely, once or twice in a thousand years, does the dragon rise. But when this happens, hell breaks loose. All the other foul creatures inhabiting the land to the north will join the fray and invade our lands. The Storm God is a military order founded more than a millennium ago after the last visit of the dragon. 
It is or it is dedicated to protecting the realm of men in case the dragon shall ever return. Unfortunately, after long times of peace, the Storm Guard is a shadow of what it once was. Now that the dragon is back, you, Lord Commander, must fulfill your oath. We rely on you to lead the order back to old strength. Stand strong, stay true, and let nobody pass. In the name of the king! I have no idea what that is. Something? Welcome to your outpost here in the north, Lord Commander. I hope you had a safe trip. Times are indeed rough, and your leadership is more than appreciated. Thank you, friend. Thank you so very much. All right, so navig uh, town navigation bar. The navigation bar provides quick access to all buildings in the town. Initially, most buildings are closed. Have a look at the mission board to see what missions are available. You can click on those to close those. Now, one of the things I would say needs to be fixed is occasionally I'll have uh, messages that are flopped off to the left side of the screen, and I can't actually read them. They just they're there, and I I see that there's something there. But I see like a couple letters and the bubble goes to the left instead of the right. So that's one of the things I've noticed that could be fixed. It might be based off of this current resolution or what have you. I also would say that it running at you know 1080p as what I usually do everything on is 1080p. Uh, maybe some of these things could be increased in size. I don't know if they can do if the guy can do UI scaling. Bitmen Studios can do that. But maybe increase this a little bit, and just the font in general seems to be a little bit small, and with it being a fancier font, it's a little bit difficult to read. But again, these are all small things, and they're not a big deal, and if you're playing on your own, it's not going to matter. It's just for ease of what I do that I would prefer that. Alright, so the three things that are available right now are the graveyard for any of our dead heroes, the steward's office, it allows us to perform domestic duties, but we're not supposed to do any of that yet. First, what we're supposed to do is go to the mission board, so we're going to go there. And the roster. This shows us the roster of, of the people that we have. The roster shows all characters in your army. It's always good to have enough men to compensate for losses or injuries. Right-click on a character to get more information. So again, all this stuff being slightly larger wouldn't be terrible, but I, again, if you can't do that, you can't do that. I mean, it's not the end of the world. It's just something I would like to see personally. All right, and then here are the missions that are available right now. There is only one available. It's a patrol, and it's a short patrol. Here you can see all the available missions initially. They, things are quiet, but you should send your party to patrol our borders so they can gain a bit of experience. And then down here, this is our party comp uh, sorry, composition. This is the party you are sending out on the mission. Drag heroes from the roster to the panel to change the party composition. So I'll click on these three things to get rid of them. Right now they're sending our first three people. You'll see the little brown shield or flag or crest or whatever that is. And it shows up as what they actually do. Now, one thing I, I, I wish it was a little bit more clear. I mean, I figured it out over time of playing. But one thing I wish they would either say or not say is what which one of these creature, which one of these people of the roster are actually heroes. The warrior, he's a hero. He is a hero. I know for a fact he is. And it doesn't say anywhere, like, where it says warrior, I kind of wish to, like, to the left of that a little bit. It might be in, like, parentheses or, or like, brackets or something or, like, I don't know, anything. Uh, it would say hero because these guys down here, these archers, they're basic archers. And possibly just because it says basic archer, maybe, maybe that means that, you know, it's not a hero. Maybe it's simpler to say that these are not heroes or whatever they're considered. Uh, so a basic archer assigned to your forces. Unlike heroes, you cannot learn new skills or get better equipment. You may want to replace him with a hero at some point. It says it there, and that's okay. Maybe that's all it needs. I haven't, like I said, I haven't gotten like 100 hours in the game or anything, so I don't know. And this guy, it says the same thing. Basic guard, uh, unlike heroes, you can't learn. That might be enough. I just figured it might be easier at a glance just to see. And I wasn't sure about the, the healer, whether the healer could learn new skills or anything else, or if that was another one of the basic units. But apparently, the healers are not. They are not basic units, and they are also considered heroes. So the healer can provide much-needed sustain and protection. He is essential to keeping the party alive. He is squishy, so keep him away from harm. I love the fact that he uses squishy in his description. All right, a basic archer assigned to protect your forces. Unlike heroes, you cannot learn new skills or get better equipment. You may want to replace them with a hero at some point. So there you have it. And yes, we will be replacing these people at some point. And then, of course, we have the guard here. A basic guard assigned to your forces, same exact thing. You may want to replace them. So 
It does say there, like I said, I would prefer to have it over here so you don't need to open the right click thing. Be like, okay, this guy's a hero, this guy's a hero, this guy, he's just a basic archer. Again, maybe what they have here is enough. Specializes in healing and protection. I, I, I don't know, guys. I think it's probably simple enough, but I would like to see a, a bracket or a parent, like where it says short up here in patrol. Something like that that says mercenary or hero next to the thing. It would just be a little bit quicker, but again, not a big deal. I know I'm harping on stuff. I'm just going to point out things that I like or don't like. You guys, feel free to chime in. Let me know what you think. If you think I'm being crazy or just being, I don't know, too persnickety about what I want, then just say so. I mean, I'm curious. I want to know what you guys feel this game has to offer and what you'd like to see. I mean, I'm sure it would help the developer, too, to get some sort of outside opinions and whatnot. That's kind of the point of early access to begin with, right? But again, this is all minor stuff. It's not even important in the grand scheme of things. You can figure it out, right? All right, let's take a look at good old Ned Pinkerboot. Pinkerbot? I don't know. Alright, we're going to right-click on him, and uh, the warrior wears heavy armor that allows him to take a lot of punishment. Keep him on the front lines and let him build up adrenaline to use his most powerful skills. And he starts off with hamstring, retreat, and taunt. Oh, this is different. My last guy had like a shield bash. That's pretty sweet. Hamstring. He's crippled. That doesn't help me too much, considering you're going to be tied up in melee. But still, it's not bad. Um, what do we have for our healer? I'd like to see what skills we have. We have heal, we have healing breeze, which is pretty cool. Heal party, and, oh, heal other. We don't even have the, the remove debuff thing. Okay, that's cool. Well, so, you, even you're starting, every time you start the game, it's going to be a little bit different. Let's see what our archer has to offer, too. Archer has crippling shot, point blank shot, and lunge. So, this is all the same. I imagine the basic uh, characters... Like the archer and the guard are going to probably have the same skills because that's all they have and they can't learn any new ones. Alright, that being said, let's hop in and get a mission underway, guys and gals. I have babbled on long enough about random stuff. Stamina missions demand a lot of physical strength. Embarking on a mission will reduce the stamina of your heroes by two. Stamina will automatically regenerate every day for idle heroes. Resting in the sanctuary increases stamina recovery. Only weak leaders believe in luck. Strong leaders believe in cause and effect. Okay. Gold, food, and potions. Here you can see the resources you own. Potions can be used in battle to gain various benefits. In any case, make sure to bring enough food or you'll be starving, and that would be bad. Alright, down here, mission map. This is the map of the area we are exploring during our mission. Each room holds a random event. You can abandon your mission at any time. Up here, you can abort the mission. Uh, your party. The banner represents the current location of your party. Use the arrow keys or use your mouse to move to an adjacent room. Each move costs one food per character. Well, we're going to head to the right this time. I'm going to clear out the whole map, get as much as I can out of it, and then we'll move on. I hear my dog has entered the room. and She sounds like she's looking for trouble, which is terrifying, by the way. All right, you notice a trace of blood leading into the dense woods. Someone or something is hurt. Attempt to follow the trace of blood to find out its origin, or don't get sidetracked and just run away or avoid it. We want to find out. All right, while following the trace of blood, you bump into a hostile party. You are prepared to fight. All right, you are facing mostly harmless orcs and creatures. Let's hope we do okay here. And we will go into battle and prepare to begin. Knuckles cracked, hands rubbed together. Goblins come with numerous abilities, temperaments, and appearances. Alone, they are not much of a threat, but a pack of goblins can be dangerous. Wolves are fast and attack with unexpected ferocity. Their sharp teeth can cause deadly wounds. So each time you come across a new character or a new creature you haven't seen before, it does a little intro to the creature. It will give a little thing that you can read that was like right up in the middle of the screen, along with the narration. I really like that actually a lot. It adds a little bit of flavor and a little bit more oomph to it. And it usually points out any specific thing, like if they're, they're very heavily poisoning, if they come back from the dead, or whatever the case is. It kind of gives you an idea. I think uh, there's like a skeletal mage that if you group your guys up, he can hit you with a fire thing that spreads to adjacent allies. So that's something to be aware of. So it's really cool how they've done this. Alright, your team. Here you can see your team. Click a portrait to select a character or right-click for more info. Below the portrait you see bars showing the character's health, energy, and remaining actions. So our characters each have two actions. You can either move once, and then I think that's all you can do, and then you can do an action. Or you can do two actions. So if you're like right up against somebody as a melee, you can be like, bam, slash, and do two attacks. Or if they're within range of your ranged units, you can be pew, pew. So there you go. 
the battlefield. This is the battlefield. Click on an empty cell to move to the currently selected or to move the currently selected character to that position. Use your cursor keys to move the camera around or WASD also works. The skill bar shows all the skills currently selected. The currently selected character has equipped. Select a skill, then select the target to use it on. Hover your mouse over the skill button to learn more about it. Alright, uh, use these buttons to switch to the next characters, or you can use other buttons. I just usually click on the characters themselves. Uh, stay out of... Uh, oh. After a few turns, you can also attempt to escape. I never actually tried that after two turns. Cool. You have to stay out of melee range to su successfully escape. That's cool. And then the enemy. On the right-hand side, you can see the enemy team. Click on the portrait, or right-click to find out more about it. So there we go, guys and gals. Alright, so what am I going to do? We're going to dismiss all help bubbles in the middle here. And we can move around the map. We can zoom in. We can zoom out. I, if we hold the middle mouse button, we can change our angle. And we can rotate with Q and E. So, I mean, we have all sorts of stuff we can do. Fully pan panoramic view of whatever we're up against. I'm going to try to close somewhat close to them, but not so close that they can murder me. That's my goal. We're going to move our healer forward. And we're going to take a shot probably at the wolf, I guess. There we go. I'm going to move my melee combatant forward and try to, like, do some sort of block stop, I guess, if you want to call it something, so nobody else can get past. And then we're going to move our archer over. And we're going to use the crippling shot onto the assassin, I think. So I'm not going to focus fire 100% right now. I'm just using the ability to slow him down. And anytime a new condition or something comes up that you haven't experienced before, uh, a chat window thing here will pop up and explain what it is that just happened. So the crippled condition. The goblin assassin now suffers from a crippled condition, having the following effect. Movement range halved. 25% chance to block, parry, evade, or dodge. It's been lowered by 25%. Conditions are negative effects that character that effects on characters that last for several turns. A character can suffer from multiple conditions at the same time. Some are annoying, while others can be deadly. Conditions are shown up as little icons next to the character's portrait, where you'll find more information about their effects. Learn special skills or use a potion of cleansing to remove conditions. Alright, well, we've done all we can. We're going to end our turn and let them close with us. He's not going to be able to make it. The wolf probably will, yeah, that's what I was assuming. He's going to howl. I don't know what that's going to do. Oh, we'll find out right here. The wolf has just performed a shout. Shouts provide benefits to all affected allies with an earshot for a number of turns white spiral circling around a caster's feet will our character's feet will indicate what or that that character is affected by a shout all shouts effects all shout effects on a character will show up as little icons next to the character's name along with their remaining duration description uh, the effects of a shout can be removed by the enemy team now again this is one of my things that I would like to see but this could be a little it's not tiny I can read it somewhat okay but I would like it to be just a little bit bigger. Like if they increased this stuff by like, I don't know, maybe 15% with the UI scaling or something, that would be perfect for me. But again, it's it's one of those small things that I it doesn't really matter and it's not really going to affect anyone else. It's just me. All right, so we're going to hamstring you, I guess. Hit you with the hammy. Bam! All right, so our, we just got adrenaline for our first attack. Anytime we use attacks, we will get adrenaline for a warrior, unless we're using an attack that uses adrenaline. Your warrior, Ned Pinkerbot, or Pinkerboat, has just gained a strike of adrenaline by hitting the wolf. Adrenaline is shown as a yellow bar above the character model and can be built up by hitting enemies. Once you have built up enough adrenaline, you can use it on powerful adrenaline attack skills. However, if your warrior is neither taking nor dealing damage, his adrenaline will then decrease every turn. Alright, so there you go, and it looks like the wolf has the same thing. He is also an adrenaline junkie. Alright, I shall slapify you right upside the head. Again. Alright, what I'd like to do now is probably use Healing Breeze on our guy. It's going to essentially mean every turn he's going to get 12 health back. So if he can block or dodge or do any parry, any of the other st stuff that prevents him from taking damage, he'll probably not need any additional healing, and we can focus our healer more as a DPSer. Ned Pinkerboot, or Pinkerbot, now benefits from the effects of an enchantment. Enchantments are positive effects on your own heroes that last several turns. The yellow glyph circling around his feet indicates that the character is enchanted. All enchantments on the character also show up as little icons next to the character's portrait, along with the description of their effects and the remaining duration. 
some characters have spells that remove enchantments. So if we take a look up here, it shows you right there, regenerating 12 health every turn for three turns. Pretty darn sweet. We're going to attack you with a ranged shot. And now it's time for you to do some damage. And we're going to do the point blank shot. I don't know if... Shoot from close range. It doesn't say how close. I'm assuming this is probably close enough. We're going to try it. Usually if you don't meet the uh, requirements, it'll, it won't let you do it. So since it let us shoot it, I guess it was within the requirements and it used the skill. And hopefully, and theoretically, we will be able to finish him with one final shot from our archer. And down goes the wolf. Courage, determination. These virtues will lead us to victory. We just gained plus one to our constitution. I'm still not 100% sure what that does for us, so I apologize for that. Noah Heli or Healy just killed a wolf. Delivering the killing blow gives a morale boost to the whole party, increasing their constitution. I'm not sure what that means. I assume it means like our health went up, but I'm not positive. All right, so he's attacking and he hit us once. It's not great, but it's okay. All right, what I think I would like to do, I guess we'll focus him down. That's not terrible. We're not really hurting too badly either. So I'm just going to double attack with our wonderful person over here. I tried to click an extra time and it's like, no, we're going to attack again. Some of the animations are a little bit slow. I don't hate that though. I actually like that. It wouldn't be terrible to have an option somewhere at some point to speed that up. Because I know a lot of people get super impatient. Me, I'm not one of those people. Like, I like seeing the guy pull out his arrow, draw his bow, and fire. To me, that's awesome. I love that. So very much. Alright, we're going to attack with a melee attack. That's really about all we can do. We won't be able to kill him outright unless we get, like, a crit. But there's no chance of that happening. So he's going to move forward. He's healing up, oddly. But that's okay. And boom. We are now bleeding, and we have no way of fixing the conditions. And that's kind of crappy. So basically, he just counteracted our 12 heal per turn with that bleed. That's okay. What we're going to do now is throw a heal onto our boy. And then we're going to attack that guy. Oh, wait. We're going to cancel. Uh, it decided to make me walk toward him as opposed to just chilling. I don't know why. So we get to learn about zone of control. You're about to enter the enemy's zone of control marked by red crossing swords. Entering their zone of control will force you into melee. Use waypoints to circumvent zones of control. Well, I don't want to do that, so I prefer just to shoot him. There it is, and he survived. Isn't that always the way? All right, well, we'll take him out with our archer. Bam, down he goes. Three constitution, one one. Critical hit. Noah Heli has just scored a critical hit. Critical hits are particularly powerful attacks that do a lot more damage than the standard attack. Every character has a certain chance to score critical hits. Let's take a look at our boy here. Let's see, does it show us our crit chance? Uh, critical hits, we have a 10% chance. Not too bad. Not too bad. Alright, can I get rid of this? There we go. Alright, we're going to take another shot on this guy now. And foomp right to the face. And then we're going to smack him again. Unfortunately, our boy doesn't have a whole lot that he does in melee. He's got the ability to retreat and he can taunt people. We've already gone through Ooh, so much pain. That's not good. Let's make this count. Alright, so we just got critically hit. Uh, Ned Pinkerbot now suffers from a deep wound condition having the following effect. It lowers the maximum health by 20% and reduces the effects of healing spells. That is not cool at all. Oh, well, we're gonna land him with our melee attack. Oh, he evaded our melee attack. The Goblin Assassin has evaded a melee attack from Ned Pinkerbot. Every character has a unique chance to evade incoming melee attacks, including melee skills. A character can typically only evade attacks he sees coming. Attacks from flanks or the rear cannot be evaded. Well, there you go. Well, we landed that one. Alright, can we get this shot off? And we did. I'm going to go for the heal onto our boy. And then we're going to go for the attack to end him. Alright, and there we go. We're victorious the in the battle. Win, the desire to survive. The urge to protect our people. These are the true virtues of the Storm God. Alright, patrol the borders of the realm of men and deal with any foes you run into. Your heroes are victorious. You search dead bodies for loot. We receive 24 gold and 10 food plus 52 experience. And it shows you what we got there. 
and we can continue on. I'm going to go for one more room, and then we're probably going to break off this first episode, but don't worry, guys and gals, there will be more to come. We'll probably play through, I'm going to guess it's going to be no less than five episodes, but we'll see. A strange creature hovers above you. Half woman, half bird, you find yourself staring at her bare breasts when she suddenly swoops down to try and steal some of your food. Woman or not, we can't let her get away with that. Chase after her before she flies out of sight. You don't beat naked women, wings or not. I think that's going to be the right answer. Mostly because these are bad and battle-hardened creatures, and I'm a little bit hesitant to go after them. So she's going to steal six of our food. I'm okay with that. It's not the end of the world. It happens. All right, you make a halt and listen carefully. The sounds of wild creatures chasing their prey can be heard. However, a closer look, you realize their prey is humans, or are humans. You're facing some harmless creatures. All right, we're going to aid the humans, prepare to fight. Let's see what we can do. Rub those hands together, hit that space bar, and crack them knuckles and prepare. It's going to be fantastic. All right. These lizards used to be a peaceful folk, but have recently taken up arms to join the fight. Poisonous vipers have always been dangerous in the past, as they've always stayed clear of larger creatures, but now they attack anything they see. Spiders are usually harmless, but these have grown to an unusual size. They are now more terrifying than ever. Okay, so we just got to see three new enemies and get the rundown on said enemies. Alright, so poison's not great. This dude hurts pretty bad sometimes, not always. And, of course, spiders are spiders and they're always annoying. You guys know this. Alright, I'm gonna move here. Gonna move here. I'm pretty sure I get within range to do something. Just to this guy, that's totally okay. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing on this side, except we're gonna go for the slowing, crippling shot onto you, Mr. Snakey Poo. Keep him out of the fight as long as we can, and I guess we end our turn. The lizard man shouldn't be able to make it. I don't think the spider can either. So I get to actually step up and man up against these guys. Alright, so they are pretty unhappy with me right now. That's okay. I'm going to cripple this guy. We're actually going to Good try job. to take him out Show right no away. Mercy. Don't expect them to do the same. I say that, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to still try to take him out, but I'm going to throw this onto you. Keep you going with the healing breeze, and then we're going to go here and take a shot. And it's going to do decent damage, and we may actually get the kill blow out of this. Let's see. Well there it is. Down he goes. That creature will never kill one of ours again. The serpent is slithering his way over, but he couldn't quite make it. We're gonna they're gonna attempt to web us, and it looks like he did. He crippled us. And the spiders do pretty large amounts of damage. In case you guys were unaware, I'm gonna smack him once, twice. We're gonna throw out you know what? I'm not gonna throw the heal yet. I'm just going to we're gonna focus down the spider. We'll throw the heal a little bit later. Can we kill off the spider with one single arrow? The survey says Definitely yes. Did. Perfect. And we shall attack you too, sir. Alright, hopefully we dodge whatever attack. It's going to be a poison, I assume. Ooh, critical hit and poisoned. Double bad stuff there. Alright, Ned Pinkerbot now suffers from a poison condition, having the following effect. Lose 20 health every turn. Energy-based skills cost plus 2. Not ideal. Definitely not great. We're going to smack him once. We're going to throw out the, I guess, the heal other. Keep you at full health if we can. Throw out an attack. I, I'm i hoping that we don't kill him here. Just get him one shot away. Good, he's still alive. And we're going to kill him with Ned. Get him, Ned. Yeah. All right, and there we have it, folks. Another victory for the Order. If only we could exterminate them for good. So, if you guys hadn't noticed or you couldn't tell, there's some correlation between this and, um, well, the Game of Thrones. It's inspired by that. The Storm Guard is inspired by the Night Watch, and, you know, winter is coming, darkness is coming. There's a lot of, uh, similarities or things that he draws from that. I'm totally fine with that. I think that's awesome and excellent. So, kudos to him for that. Alright, you sheathe your weapons and hasten to look around, or look after the exhausted civilians. They thank you for saving their lives. We got 54 gold, 19 food, and 48 experience. We will continue, and this is where I'm going to break off the episode, guys and gals. 
in the next episode we should be able to easily finish up this first level patrol and then hop in and see what we unlock as far as the different buildings and whatnot. And then we'll continue from there. I hope you guys had a lot of fun with this game. All the information down below in the description of the video will tell you where to get the game. It'll have links and all sorts of other various things. Where to get the game, more information about the game, and of course about the developer and all that wonderful fun stuff. If you guys enjoyed, please like, comment, subscribe, and share it. Definitely get behind this game. It's a lot of fun, and as a Steam Early Access game goes, it's got a lot of content and a lot of stuff to just dive into. I definitely, definitely recommend it. Anyway, folks, until the very next episode, my name's Bumpy McSquiggums. Thank you for stopping by The Freak Show, and I will see you later. <laughs>